ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு அட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ இன் திஸ் சீரீஸ் ஆஃப் வீடியோஸ் வி ஆர் வாட்சிங் அபவுட் தி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃபேஸஸ் ஆஃப் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் ஸோ வி ஹேர் வி ஆர் வி ஆர் சீங் தி டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃபேஸஸ் ஆஃப் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் ஸ்டார்டிங் ஃப்ரம் த பிளான் அண்ட் தி அதர் ஃபேஸஸ் விச் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி ஆர் ஸ்கிரிப்டிங் அண்ட் டு எக்ஸிக்யூட் த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டெஸ்ட் different load tests and different types of performance tests so in our previous videos if you remember we saw about how to create an effective performance testing plan and what are all the perform the best practices and strategies which we have to follow while creating the performance test plan because this is the one which talks about what we are going to do do and how we are going to do so now to continue in that video we are going to see about in this video we are going to deep dive into the basics are the fundamentals of the performance testing plan and the testing strategies which we are going to see so before that i would request you to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet please do follow all the videos and share the video with your friends and like comment your questions and feedbacks in case if you want to discuss about any of the other topics related to performance testing or engineering please do comment in the comment section so as i mentioned already in the first video we will miss the missing we will uh, fill the missing spots which we have already identified so for now uh, in phase 1 i don't have any points to fix and in phase 2 and phase 3 i'll have to update few things so the first thing is we have to identify the scope i think which i have discussed that in my previous uh, video where i have discussed about the point scope so we have to identify or we have to clearly tell what comes under scope and what does not come under scope so here we can clearly mention that these web applications or the scenarios and the api calls will be under the test or will be inside the scope let me highlight it so this comes under the scope and anything any testing or anything that comes out of this will come under the out of scope so for example sometimes the team wants us to do some security testing or some functional testing or in case some user acceptance testing or user acceptance testing or any oat which is operational acceptance testing and these might be clearly confirmed before the start of the testing that these are not the scope of the testing so we should clearly confirm that only these areas or the scripts or these functionalities will be under the scope and anything other than will be outside the scope say for example the team might come to us and say like you have the scripts ready with you so why don't you do us a security testing with different set of credentials or why don't you help us with functional testing so it's it's not about we don't do but it's not the scope of performance testing or that does not comes under performance testing so we should clearly tell them that this does not covers performance testing and even the user acceptance testing so that has to be a separate area which we will see at some point of time and then the operational acceptance testing although the operational acceptance testing is a non functional testing but still this will not be covered under this part or during this part of the performance testing and adding to it we will need to confirm what are all the app servers and what are all the web servers the sql servers and in case if there are any firewall or if there are any load generators all these items has to be documented like in case if you have some app server app 01 or app 02 and then in case if you have web 01 and web 02 so all these all these components has to be identified and they have to be properly documented that your testing will involve these components during your testing because in this way you can clearly confirm or you can even identify that if something is missing in the production like where if, if you are monitoring during your production you might understand that you are not missing anything and everything comes under your testing 
and now in under this planning and designing the performance test we will have to identify what are all the tests that we are going to do so basically we will start with a load test so we will keep it as load test and then we will run a soak test and then an endurance test in this one we are not emulating so as part of this testing or as part of this video we are not going to try any of the volume testing so I'm just restricting myself with load test, soak test and endurance test and then a spike test so all these four testing we are going to do as part of this testing so we have defined it so in case if you want to know about why and what are the objectives of load testing you can see that in detail in my other videos but still I would just give a brief introduction so load testing so the primary objective of doing the load testing is to simulate a realistic or a real world testing with the expected load on the software application and measure the performance under that load so what is the goal of doing the load testing so the goal is to ensure that the application can handle the anticipated traffic the number of users or the user load or the data volume without any degradation in performance or errors and in case if something goes wrong we'll have to identify why it is happening so that's the objective of load testing and when it comes to soak testing so the soak testing is to evaluate the performance and stability of the software application under a sustained load over an extended period of time so that's the difference so this will run for an extended period of time and this load test basically will be around one hour or two hours but this soak test will go for an extended period of time and then coming back to soak test this is also known as endurance testing soak test or endurance testing and the goal is to determine how well the application can handle continuous usage without any performance degradation errors and then when it comes to spike test so as we all know the spike test is to evaluate how well a software application can handle sudden sharp increase in traffic and this sudden change in the with, with the number of users or requests so the goal of the spike test is to determine the maximum load capacity or the maximum load capacity of the application and identify any performance issues that occur under such conditions so in most of the situations the client will come and tell us that you have to do this load test and you have to run a smoke a soak test and then a spike test and in case if the client is not aware of any of such testing so we will have to come up with these types of tests that we have to tell them that I see I need to run a load test and that this is the reason and by doing this we can identify these things and this is the goal of this load testing so and why then we have to explain to the clients or the customers that see this is the soak testing and this is objective and these are the goals of doing the soak testing and when doing this we can be we can ensure that the application will not fail for a good point of time so in all the ways so we have to be a good communicator so apart from the non-functional testing knowing all these technologies and the metrics we have to be a good communicator and we have to make sure we have to interact very well with the client with the developers with everybody around the team and make sure that everything goes smooth and before that before all these tests we will need to run a smoke test so what is a smoke test a smoke test is to just ensure that every set up or every script or everything works fine the environment is working fine it is up and running so to ensure everything we will need to run again a smoke test before we do all these tests so these all these tests has to be documented so we'll have to document everything in the document and tell them that see these are the tests that we are going to run are we going to plan for the testing okay so let's now go to the next level so okay so we have identified these other tests that we are going to run right so now we will have to identify what is the load for these users so 
how many users are going to use for load test or how many for soak test and what is in the case of a spike test. In some cases, again, I'm telling, so there are like different types of clients you might come across when you're doing performance testing. Some clients are like, they will have more experience on performance testing and how does it work. So for though, if you work under those clients, you are really gifted because you might get many inputs from them. But if you are working under a person who is new to performance testing, then it's a great challenge. And that is where you get a very good learning curve because you get yourself educated and you can keep the other stakeholders informed and let them know that these are the things which are going to get involved in the testing. And in that way, you make everybody around you to know the value of performance testing. Okay, so in this case, so I take for, for, the, for the first example, I'm taking this as scenario one. So in scenario one, we are going to deal with a person who knows performance testing. So he will give us, for example, that you're going to run a load test with 100 users, 150 users and 200 users. This is again for an example that the client tells you that this is what you're going to run the test. So you will need to run a load test with 100 users, 150 users and then 200 users. So this is again going to be 100 percentage of the load test, 150 percentage of the load test and then again 200 percent of the load test. So this is again we are going to scale the load. And then when it comes to soak test, so this is going to be a long or an extended duration of test. So we will need to reduce the user load. So how much we have to reduce? So we will have to reduce the actual user load from 100% to 40%, which means, for example, this 100 users, you will run for one hour or for two hours. And this does not include any ramp up or ramp down. So we can, I'll tell you like, what is that? Then this is again for one hour. One hour of duration. Apart from that, we will have to decide the ramp up and then the ramp down. The ramp up and ramp down has to be, it can be equal or it can vary it but the total time is going to be 10 minutes. So it can be either four minutes ramp up and six minutes of ramp down. Then when it comes to soak test, so as I already told you, so it has to be 40 users that we're going to run it for eight hours. Same case here, it should be 60 users for eight hours. Then it's going to be 80 users for 8 hours. So this way, we can identify, because, take for example, so why 8 hours? What is the reason of 8 hours? So, taking into account of the business hours, starting from morning 9 to 5, or from 8 to 4. So that is the maximum amount of users who logs into the system and do all these activities of, say for example, if you are in a banking domain so people gets up in the morning and they start logging into the account they do the transaction so all these things happen only between 9 to 4 so that is a spike or the peak number of transactions that happen so that is the reason we take 8 hours into account and then when it comes to spike test so the spike test as I already mentioned you, so this will be going to be an increased user load. So what happens is we normally run this test or we normally start this test with 10 users for every 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, automatically another 10 users will ramp up. So in this way, we will run the test until the test or until the application goes down. So that is how this spike test runs. So in the next video, we will see about how to deal or how to collect the requirements when you are working under a team with less performance knowledge. And in the next video, we will see how are we going to plan or how are we going to do a workload modeling. So uh, in fact, I have had a separate video on workload modeling. So in this video, we will see how to do this workload modeling for this scenario too in the next video. So until I meet you in the next video, it's Vaya from Vasan Shanmugam and Little Slaw.